Hi everyone. Today we'll take a look at a different concept called the wavy curve method. So the wavy curve method will uh, essentially help us in uh, in a with inequalities. All right. So we'll get started with just by revising the basic inequalities. Right. So we have the first one, which is greater than. Then we have greater than or equal to, less than or less than equal to. Right. Nothing. Nothing too crazy. Right. So let's get started with the with an example itself. All right. So the first example I have lined up is. 3x minus 14 should be greater than, greater than 22. All right, so the way we get started is obviously, you know, we solve it like a normal equation, right? So I'm going to add 14 to both sides. So if I add 14 to both sides, what I get is 3x is greater than uh, 36, right? So x is greater than 12, and that's my inequality, right? So now if I have to plot this, right, I'm going to draw a number line, right? I'm going to draw a number line like this. Maybe I'll put zero somewhere here, and I'm I'm just drawing this arbitrarily, right? I'm not even taking drawing it to scale or anything. It doesn't even matter, right? And 12 is here. So now greater than 12 means basically 13, 14, 15, right? So I'm going to take all of these numbers. So I'm going to draw an open circle right here, and then I'm going to draw an arrow this way, right? Which shows that okay, all of the numbers after four after 12 are uh, satisfied this inequality, right? Nothing too crazy. Quite simple. Let's look at another example. All right, in this example, we have 16 minus 5x is greater than 21, greater than or equal to 21, right? Changes. The inequality is different. So if I, add, if I subtract um, 16 on both sides, right? If I subtract 16 on both sides, I'm going to get minus 5x is greater than or equal to 5, right? If I divide by minus 5 on both sides, I'm going to get x is less than, right? The sign changes when I divide or multiply by negative. Right, so I'm gonna get x is less than minus one. Right, so now if I plot this on a number line again, if I take zero here and minus one here, right, I'm gonna draw a closed circle on minus one and then draw an arrow like this. Right, oops, my bad. So I'm gonna draw, I'm gonna draw something like this. Right, so to show that anything uh, inclusive of negative one and less than negative one uh, satisfies this inequality. Another, you know, quick trick that you can use is that if uh, the inequality is like this, right, this or like this, right, so you can see that the, kind of like the arrow is pointing towards the left. So, so you can say that, okay, I'm going to draw the arrow towards the left, right? If it's greater than or it's pointing towards the right, you draw it, you know, like this, towards the right. So that's a, you know, short trick that you can do, you know, just to save time. All right, so now let's look at, you know, a few more um concepts of intervals, right? So we essentially have three intervals. The first interval is the open interval, right? Here, you can see that both signs are greater than or less than signs, right? And when we have it on a number line, we denote it as such that um, with open brackets, right? Right here, parentheses or open brackets. So we say that, so in this case, a uh, x is less than a, sorry, x is less than b and greater than a. So we denoted that x belongs to a, uh, all the values between a and b, but does not include a and b, right? Then we have closed intervals, right? In closed intervals, we have the dash or the uh, no, horizontal line right below the inequality. This time, it means that it's inclusive of both values in between, um, of a and b and the values in between, right? That's that's what, you know, that's a proper notation, right? So just be aware of that. This is some, something, you know, you might be required to write as the final answer when you're when you're answering a question. Right. Finally, we have the semi-open and semi-closed. So here you can have you know one one part can be uh, you know parentheses and one can be a square bracket. Right. You just have to be you know uh, you have, you have to see what the condition says and based on that you have to uh, draw the uh, or you have to write the um, you know the range of values that x can take in the inequality. So let's look at operations on intervals. So the first one thing we're going to talk about is intersection. All right. So now if I wanted to draw this on a number line, right? I'm going to draw this on a number line. I'm going to take green here, draw a horizontal line, right? Like this, like this, like this, right? I'm going to draw maybe from uh, all the num all the values here. I'm going to draw. I'm going to point a plot one, four, two, and six. So. I'll take this as one, take this as two, somewhere three is gonna be here, so I'm gonna put four here. Five is gonna be somewhere here, so I'm gonna put six here, right? I'm just estimating. I don't have to try it very accurately, right? So 
Now, it's a square bracket, so it's going to be inclusive. So I'm going to draw, you know, a closed circle, right? I'm going to draw a filled circle right here. So I want to draw a circle from here like this, right? That's one. Or, you know what, I'll do it in a different color altogether. So I'll take blue. So I'll do this, 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 and this, right? Like this. Similarly, I'll do one more. So two, and I'm drawing like just above it, right? Here, I'll just make it a little straighter. So like this, right? So now it's saying the intersection, right? So the common values between both ranges. So you can see that the common range, right, in this case is like right here. This is like the common range between both um, both ranges, right? So this is the common range. So we can say technically, technically the common range is now x belongs to 2, 2, 4, right? That is our common range. So the values between 2 and 4, including 2 and 4, satisfy like the new inequality, right? So this inequality basically is simplified to this. Okay. Right. Now let's get union, all right? So union means or, right? If you remember from your Venn diagrams, right? So again, I'm going to draw the same. I'm going to draw the same number line again. So now we're taking all the values, all the possible values from both ranges of x, right? So I'm going to draw again. One, two. I I even draw three, four, five, and six right like this five and six like this all right cool so now again i'm going to draw the same things again so i'm going to have one two four so it's going to be like one two four and two two six like this now what i'm going to take all the values that is that can possibly come in the um, all the range of range of x's, right? So I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna take this, and I'm gonna take this, right? So the final thing would be all of this, all of this, and all of this, right? All of this will count. So essentially, my new uh, you know, set of x's can be from 1 to 6, right? I can rewrite this way, right? Because technically, I'm taking all the values inclusive of both both sets. So I can write, write a new set, which comprises of all the values that I can take right here, right? So this is how you can simplify it a little bit. But oftentimes, you will be ha you will have to write, you know, a set of x or the different rate values of x, you know, you're solving an inequality or a function and it come and you will have to write it like the way it's written um, pink as well, right? So be familiar with how how it looks, right? This shouldn't, you know, when if you see this or if you have to write it, you should know how to write it. It shouldn't be new to you, you know, you shouldn't be seeing it for the first time when you when you're when you're going for the exam. So let's look at some polynomial inequalities and how to solve them. So I'm gonna take a different color. All right, so there's a very simple step towards it, right? So the first thing we do is we get it in factored form, right? We factorize them as if you're solving, you know, finding the roots of any power, like the same method, same approach. We start with that, right? Once we have done that, now it's already factored for us, so, right? So that part is done. Now we find the roots as if we were you know, equating it to zero. If this was equated to zero, the roots of this, you know, polynomial would be x is equal to three and x is equal to five right so now now that i have my roots these are called my critical points right these are called the critical points right these are very important because from this every you know the rest of my uh solution will be drawn from, right so i'm going to change the color again i'm going to draw a number line right or you know what i'll draw the number line white. so so here's my number line like this again i'm going to arbitrarily plot three and five right so three here 
five here, right? Like this. Okay, so now I have to decide what, where my, you know, where my arrows are going to go, whether it's going to be in between three and five, whether it's going to be less three and greater than five, that's all going to depend, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take an arbitrary value, less than three first, okay? So what value can I take which is less than three? The most simplest value that I can imagine is zero, right? Because zero is less than three. So let me just take zero. So if I take zero, right? So I'm going to get x. So if x equals to zero, right? If x is zero, then I'm going to get zero minus three and zero less than five, right? So I'm going to get minus three times minus five. That's going to give me a positive answer, right? So I'm going to get positive answer here, right? Like this, right? All right, you know what? Let me just write it once here. So I'm going to get positive answer here, right? Positive answer here, All right? Right now, I'm gonna if I take a value now, you know what? I don't need to take another value because let me tell you something. When I have something like this, right, I'm gonna get a waveform. So what I mean by waveform is it's gonna like increase and decrease. So if it's positive here, let me like draw a wave just positive. At the critical point, it's gonna be zero, and then here it's gonna go negative, and then here it's gonna go positive again. So something like this, right? Oh, I drew a straight line. So it's gonna be something you no. Know, of this sort, like this, and like this, right? So here it's gonna be negative, all the values are gonna be negative, and here all the values are gonna be positive. That's how it's gonna operate. 90% of the time it's gonna work this way, but what you can expect is you know some you know opposite pattern. So if it's positive here, it's negative here, and then it's positive here, right? You can check, you can you can take you know value of like so what's what's something that's greater than five? Six, right? So if x is six right then we have six minus three times six minus five this is positive this is also positive so positive times a positive is always positive right so this is also going to be positive this is going to be negative so now what we can say right so now what we can say is the value the different values of x right so let me change the color let me uh, make some space here, right? So I'm gonna I'm gonna take out this waveform, right? So this is the what the wavy curve means, right? So you're gonna get some type of wave here, right? So I'm gonna remove this, right? So now I'm gonna draw the actual number line. I know that x, um, that for this inequality to be satisfied, x has to be less than three and greater than five, right? So if I have to draw the final thing, right? So it's an open circle, right? Like this, and then I'm gonna draw an arrow like this, like this. And then like this, right? Simple, nothing too crazy, you know, very straightforward. But again, I can draw the uh, wave again if you want. So it's gonna look something like this, like this, and like this, right? So yeah, let's look at another example now. All right, so we have two minus x times x minus five. So again, we have it in factor form, right? That That's already really neat for us. We don't need to do much, right? So what I'm going to do, first I'm going to do is I'm going to go write the critical points. So the critical points is x equal to 2 and x is equal to 5, right? These are my critical points. Critical points, right? Again, I'm going to draw a number line very quickly. I'll do it in white again. So like this, like this, like this, right? So I have 2. I have five, right? And I have five, right? Again, I can take any value less than um less than two first, right? Zero is like the obvious value, right? It's the easiest to work. Let's keep let's keep it as easy as possible, right? So I'm gonna have two minus zero, and then I'm gonna have zero minus five. So I'm gonna have you know, well I'm gonna have uh you know two. And then I'm going to have negative 5. That gives me a negative answer. So I'm going to get a negative value here like this, right? If I take something between 2 and 5, right? let's say 3. So I'm going to have 2 minus 3 times 3 minus 5. So I'm going to have negative and a negative. That's going to give me a positive answer, right? So I'm going to have a positive value here. So you know what? Since positive is above the y-axis, I'm going to write it here. And since uh, you know, negative is below the y-axis. I'm gonna write it here. So like this, like this, and then like 
this, right? So my wave is now going to come like this, right? So this is going to be, this is my, you know, my general region, right? This is the region that's satisfying the inequality. So that means, that means, uh, the, you know, if I have to draw the inequality, it's going to be something like this, so open circle between two and five, right? It does not include two and five, but all the values between two and five. So I can say, you know, x is between two and five like this, or x belongs to two and five like this, right? So that is my final answer. So in this question, we have x times x minus five is greater than six. So let me tell you the first thing we cannot do. We cannot just write the critical points as x is equal to six and x is equal to x minus five is equal to six. Remember, it has to be as if you're solving for the roots of um, any polynomial, right? So what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to expand this. I'm going to write x squared minus 5x minus 6 is great, less, I'm sorry, greater than or equal to 0. Now I'm going to find the roots again. So I'm going to write, I can see, you know, the roots are kind of like minus 6 and plus 1. So x minus 6 and x plus 1 is greater than or equal to 0. Right, so I can just cross check this really quickly. Minus six plus uh, minus six x plus x is minus five x, and then x squared, and then I have minus six. So yeah, so now my critical points are my critical points are x is equal to six and x is equal to negative. Right, so my critical points right like this, right here. So now. I'm going to put, plot them. So I'm going to have negative one here, right? Negative one will be here, and six will be somewhere around here, right? And zero is going to be somewhere here as well. So obviously, I'm not always going to take x is equal to zero, right? Because x is equal to zero is like the easiest to work with. I don't have to do anything with that, right? So if I put, you know, zero here, right? I can just do it mentally, you know, right? So minus six times one, that gives me a negative answer. So I'm going to have a neg something in the negative region. So I'm going to have negative here, right? Like this, right? Now, if I take, you know, 10, for example, so I'm going to have 10 minus 6, which is 4, which is positive, right? And something positive plus a positive is also a positive, right? So I'm going to have positive in this region, and I'm going to have positive in this region, which with my common sense, I can tell, right? Right? So, so my wave is going to come out something like this, right? My wave is going to come out something like this right so now i can basically say right that now now that's equal to you know sine is also i'm going to do a closed circle and i'm going to say okay it's going to be like this and it's going to be like this right so now if i have to you know write the notation right if i have to write a notation i'm going to write it like this x is equal to minus infinity right so minus infinity to negative one, right? And then I'm gonna write I'm gonna write six, right? Six is inclusive, right? So and one is also negative one is also inclusive. So I'm gonna write square bracket, square bracket, and then I'm gonna write infinity like this. So there's a parenthesis or a curly bracket around infinity, right? Because it's undefined. Therefore, we can't include it in our um, set of the value or the range of values of x that x can take, right? And here, now I'm going to put a union or an intersection here. Now, I want you to think what I'm going to put for a second, right? Pause the video, think, and then I'll, you know, I'll, put, I'll put one of them, and I'll explain why I've put one of them. What I'm going to put is, I'm going to put a union here, all right? A union, not an intersection, right? Because union, remember what union means. It includes all the values from both sets right i know that this will also satisfy the condition right i know this the, from all the values from negative infinity to negative one will satisfy the inequality and i know that the values from six to infinity will also satisfy the inequality right so both will satisfy the inequality that means i can take either of those values right i can take i can take any value from this or this right and therefore i'm putting a union right if I put an intersection, that means I have to take a values common between both sets. And you know what? There is no value common between both sets because look at this, right? This is going to the left and this is going to the right. 
right? So in, in fact, there is no com, there is no you know range on the on the you know number line where both uh, arrows or both regions are intersecting. So intersection will you know will yield in basically no common values, where union will yield between all the acceptable values that x can take. All right. So in this question. The polynomial is already factorized for us, and on the other side is zero, right? So it's as if we're finding the roots of the uh, of the entire polynomials, right? So step one is already done for us. We don't need to do anything. Now we find the critical points. So the critical points here are x is equal to negative two, you know, x is equal to one, and x is equal to five, right? So let's go ahead and plot them on the number line again, right? So plotting them on the number line like this right so one thing you know you can already tell or one thing i want you i just want you to keep in mind is that this part is always going to be positive right technically you can think about it this way because it's being squared right even if it's a negative number a negative number squared is always a positive number any 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 any, any integer squared is always positive just want you to keep that in mind it might help it might not, I am not exactly sure because I'm also doing this question, you know, right now up front as you guys are doing it. So I'm going to take a white, white color number line again, just to keep it pretty simple. So let's do the white. Right, so there we go. So we have negative two, maybe here. We have one and maybe we have five somewhere here, right? So now let's take different values. No, that we can, you know, just take random values, right? So first thing I'm gonna take is zero. So zero is gonna lie somewhere right here. So if I take x is equal to zero, right? I'm gonna get two, I'm gonna get minus one whole squared, and I'm gonna get minus five, right? So this is, you know, this is gonna be positive. So positive times positive times a negative. This is gonna give me a negative value, right? So I'm gonna have negative right here, right? So I know I can say negative. So if this is negative, this has got to be positive. This has got to be positive. This has got to be negative, right? But you know what? Let's just do all of them just to see it, right? Let's just, you know, so for our satisfaction, let's do all of them, right? So if I take something less than negative 2, say negative 3, right? So negative 3 plus 2 is negative 1, right? So negative 1. Negative 3 minus 1 is negative 4 whole squared. And then we have negative 3 minus 5, which is negative 8. Right, so this is positive, right? This is already positive, right? So negative times negative is also positive. So this is this was less than zero. This is greater than zero, right? So this is positive, right? Like this. All right. Again, let's take a value between one and five. I can take two just to keep it really simple again. So I'm gonna have two plus two, which is four, right? So two plus two is four. Two minus one is one, so one squared. Four, and then two minus five is minus three right so this is also less than zero right watch this out. this is less than zero not it is not greater greater than zero this is why i did this right so this is less than zero you want you can check it again i don't mind at all so we have if x is equal to two so we have two plus two times two minus one times two minus five right so this is four this is one sorry this is squared so one squared and this is negative right so this is also negative, right? So like I said, um, like I said, so this will always be positive, right? No matter what value we take, because it's squared, right? So now we also, we still have a negative, right? So it's not a positive, right? This is why I know I did everything. So you can, you know, you can use that approximation, you know, of, you know, being like, okay, if this is positive, this is negative, and this is positive, right? You can only do that when you have two factored forms. Here we have like four, right? So we can't really do that. So now. Let's check this also, right? So uh, any value greater than five, let's say six, right? Keep it simple again, not too complicated. So we have six plus two, which is eight, right? Six minus one, which is five, and then six uh, minus five, which is one. So positive, 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 so positive, right? So positive, like this, right? So now if I draw a wavy you know, curve again, I'm gonna have something like this, And this, like this, it'll be like this, right? So now I need all values greater than zero, right? So with that logic, you know, all values greater than zero, you know, 
will comprise basically all values just where x is less than you know sorry where x is less than negative two right and x is greater than five right also let me say or right any values in that range will satisfy so i can say you know and with proper notation i can say negative infinity right to two inclusive right so i'm going to put a square bracket union inclusive of five square bracket again to infinity and then a parentheses like this so this is my final answer now another shortcut that you could have used was you could have ignored this altogether right you could have you know crossed this part out altogether and just focused on this and this right because this is going to be positive no matter what right whether whether uh, the whole polynomial will be negative or not will be determined by this inequality this sorry this factored form and this factored forms x plus 2 and x minus 5 will determine you know whether it's positive or whether it's negative this is going to, this is going to make it positive always right because it's squared so you could have just you know wrote, written down this and this and then you know drew the entire uh, wavy curve and all of you know check them based on just using this and this and ignoring this right uh, you could have done that you know it's a shortcut but you know if, this, if you're doing this for the first time i highly recommend doing this way doing it every step by step checking every single critical point and then determining you know where the values of x will lie in the number line right so this if you do it this way which i just explained you will never go wrong right this is 100 percent accurate right if you use a shortcut you just have to be careful of the different you know uh, conditions that can take place right? just be careful careful of that and you should be fine all right so with that we wrap up um the entire uh wavy curve method right of this today's video and so i, I just want to you know reiterate all the things that we did right so first thing you want to do is get it in standard form right right so you want to factorize the polynomial if it isn't already right get the x in the positive side so what what it means is you know get it in x minus you know some constant or x plus some constant don't have it k minus x you know that that can you know unnecessarily complicate things right always want to have in the, you know x should be positive every time you know you work with so x minus plus minus some k x plus you know m something in that form right just keeps things easy um uh, you don't have to you know worry about the inequality sign or you know signs uh, changes uh sign changes later when you solve the question right ensure that one side of the inequality is zero right you can't have some constant like six that we had in the previous question you want to keep zero it's as if you're finding the roots uh of a polynomial right so once you've done that then you find the critical points like we did with open and closed circles so open we have this open we have this close we have the line underneath which uh, indicates equal to as well but then again we mark the region like we did right with the negative and positive values no present there we take random arbitrary points in between the regions and we determine whether they're positive or negative once once they're positive or neg negative we check the question whether whether the question wants greater than zero or less than zero or you know equal to that way as well based on that then we you know finalize our, our range of x right so this is the entire wavy curve method it's not you know too complicated you know you just have to follow it step by step questions you know examiner can you know uh throw you off by putting something a little bit more complicated you can even have trigonometry in this case you can have you know three sine x plus six is greater than zero or something like this you know you can even have something like that uh you will actually there's a good chance you will right so that's when you know trick comes into play or you might even have something with calculus you know we have you have a polynomial you have to differentiate it and then you have to determine you know when when the slope is positive and when it's negative based on that you also have to decide you know you'll also have to use this method right so it has multiple applications right you will see them in different other chapters as well so yeah with that we wrap up the wavy curve method uh, next video we'll take a look at absolute value or modulus functions or radical either one we'll start with either one and then we'll move forward from there so yeah this is all for today's video and i'll see you in the next one